I think Creator made us for a reason, and we're here for a reason. I think the Earth needs us. And a lot of our ancestors way back took care of the land in such a good way that if they were to leave, the land would actually miss them. You know, the land misses us. You know, if you think about the last five things you threw away, it's kind of hard to remember. What we did through this process is make that process conscious. Months of meditation on our shadows, on our waste. Cutting and cleaning and scrubbing and adorning this plastic, we loved it. <laughs> to be able to become a transformation, to become a whale. For Meow Wolf and for Santa Fe bringing Ethel into their community, I think the community as a whole is saying, like, we understand that we have been a part of this problem as well. And Ethel, in a sad but also beautiful way, represents that they admit that, that we admit it, that I admit it. And then the next step is how can we create that change? I used to wake up feeling like the human race is hopeless, like we'll never change. This is so important for us to change what we're doing right now. I'm from a small town in northern New Mexico. New Mexico has one of the highest poverty levels and our people are hurting. They need jobs, they need food. Our communities need a better option. If we can start producing sustainable foods in the communities, this is the solution. The way we start to consider all the different impacts of what we're doing in a place really shifts what we do in a place. For this project, we decided to use all number two high density polyethylene. It's one of the safest plastics to work with. It does not off gas at its melting temperature. We have four trays of those, bake in the oven for 30 minutes each, and get put all placed into a mold and that mold gets pressed and stays in the press for 30 minutes. And yeah, so we did that about 750 times. Wow. She's built and made of 5,000 pounds of trash. It was all a huge healing process. It brought up a lot of things because you see all the things that you've used before. Now you see your shampoo bottles, laundry detergent bottles, your milk jugs. And you look at them and you're just like, what are we doing? And the realization starts to come up. And that happened with every person that came into our studio and came and worked on the Ethel. Like hundreds of people came through. And to realize that, to feel that, is way more powerful than actually telling somebody. You know, there are people building roads out of plastic and sidewalk and bricks. And I think it's going to continue because more and more cities, municipalities that have nowhere to put their waste. As an environmentalist, I found myself very frustrated with working on technological solutions. I felt like we really needed to change that narrative to be able to bring magic back into the world so we care. I think it's so amazing that Ethel came to us and our people right now. I feel like we need her more than ever. New Mexico has just jumped up to the third ranking states for oil production, and plastics are a product of the oil industry. When we think about why isn't it close to the ocean, 
the ocean impacts the whole world. The ocean is the biggest oxygen producer in the world. We think it's the trees, now it's the ocean. And all water leads to the ocean. Anything upstream affects the ocean. So we're excited to be in, in a desert landscape for, to remind people, that reminds them of their connection to everything. What I want to focus on is aquaponics. And does everybody here understand that when I have a system and I feed the fish, they create the fertilizer. The thing about aquaponics is we're trying to marriage the fish to the plants. All right, what else is in this ecosystem back here? Fish, plants, water, what other living organisms? Bacteria. There you go, so you have a whole ecosystem in here. We have to feed seven billion people on the planet right now. When I was born, there was 3.5 billion people. We have doubled the global population just in my lifetime. Looks like brownie. Mm. It feels like it too. That's cool. I honestly Dude, look at those little red ones right like there. Yeah, the dude, look at them. They're thriving so well here. <laughs> Guys, look at this, this one. one over here. Oh my oh, wow. Lord. Look at when my students graduate, I say welcome to the club. That's how small this industry is, and you could be this shining example. Now that I'm part of this, I realize that I can make a difference. I feel like I have this sense of purpose. To open yourself up with a full heart to be in service, you get this incredible opportunity to do something bigger than what you could have possibly dreamed. One of the ways we have power to change our world and change our paradigm is to change our story. Art and story has the power to change that narrative, really changes the energy around how we hold our materials. And that's the only way we're gonna care, is we, we change that energy and vibration around it. If you see something and you love it, instead of it just being a resource, it's a relative. And that's a whole different vibration. And that's how we get people to care. So as you hold this seed, what do you want the seventh generation forward to look like? What do you want them to have? As you think about this, don't just think about the words, but think about what it looks like. What do you see? What do you see going on? What do you see for your people? Because sometimes if we can see it, we can make it. But what does that look like for you? <laughs>